mother of tourists in Uganda, London recommends avoiding national park. The United Kingdom on Wednesday advised its citizens to avoid Uganda's famous Queen Elizabeth National Park after three people, including a British national, were killed the previous day by ADF rebels. In its advice to travelers, the British government advises against all but essential travel to this park in the southwest of the country, which is very popular with tourists. They said, if you are currently in the park, you should follow the advice of the local security authorities. If you are able to do so safely, you should consider leaving the area. They added, stressing that the asylums are still at large. The Ugandan authorities announced on Tuesday evening that three people, two British and South African nationals and their Ugandan guide had been killed while traveling in Queen Elizabeth National Park on the border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. The police attributed the attack to the Allied Democratic Forces ADF, a militia group based in the east of the DRC that has pledged allegiance to the Islamic State. The Elections Commission of Liberia, also known as NEC of Liberia, says she is pleased with the massive turnout of voters on October 10 to cast their ballots for president in the national legislature. David Etta Brown Lansana says although there have been challenges, including misinformation and threats on social media, the commission is content that it conducted the polls with integrity and credibility and expects the Liberians to accept the results. This as the Commission announced new provisional results on Tuesday from 98.4% of total polling places showing President George Weir with a slim lead 43.78% over his main challenger former Vice President Joseph Wakai with 43.49%. Brown Lansana tells me the NAC is working hard and will soon announce the results. So far, we've done uh, most of the counties, if not all. We have announced results to the effect that uh, just a few polling places are left. And we'd like to believe that in another few days' time, we should be able to announce the final results of these elections. Uh, we announced today that we had some issues in Nimba County, where uh, in District 4, uh, ballot boxes were taken away by some persons who the police apprehended later on and retrieved some of those boxes. But when they came, they were all damaged. So today we announced that uh, come Friday this week, we will be conducting elections in District 4, two polling places, elections for the president, the Senate, and the representatives. These places where you plan to rerun the election, announcing the final results, would that be contingent on you completing the rerun? The rerun in those areas will go on as we are announcing the results progressively. What we'll obtain is that uh, before we announce final results for the three elections, we will have to complete the election in District 4, Nimba County, in uh, those two polling places uh, for the president, uh, senator, and the representative. Then we can announce the final results. And hopefully by Monday, Monday or Tuesday, we may be able to announce the results from there. And then um, once they go through the tally process, uh, the collation, then of course uh, we may be able to announce the final results. So, Madam Chair, let me tell you this question. I've, I've heard it from so many Liberians who think that the process is taking too long. Yes, everyone is concerned because uh, the expectation is that once you have election today, you should start giving the results today or you should announce the final result tomorrow. But the staff is working exceedingly and they have been doing so in the last so, 10 days now, trying to get these results completed. But we should also know that uh, we have internet connectivity issues. Some of these areas are highly remote. So this also takes time because the staff on the field have to look for locations uh, where the, the internet is much better, uh, is much stronger to send these results. So results being transmitted to us sometimes is intermittently done. 
but um, we're working on it and all things remaining constant in a few days' time. The final results will be shared with Liberians. Madam Chair, I've spoken with uh, some opposition party officials and they tell me that they are not satisfied with what they see as uh, some government officials showing up at vote tallying centers. Is your commission aware of this? Let me say that the tally process is open to Liberians. One. Secondly, we expect that party agents will be at these tally centers to corroborate the information received or to tell us that, you know, they're not satisfied with the numbers that they are seeing. We also expect um, observers in those uh, tally centers. So any Liberian can walk in there, per se. The thing is, everyone should comport themselves not to disrupt the process. So if I am a candidate, can I just walk into the Italian center? Like I said to you, you know, people firstly will have to identify themselves and we made sure of that, that you, if you were to come to the Italian center. The thing here is because we're looking for the highest transparency of the process, we just need to work people through it and they behave in the way that we expect. Madam Chair, before I let you go, can you reflect on the electoral process so far? And what do you see as your successes and challenges? Well, the most pleasing part of the entire electoral process since we started planning uh, some two years ago was on the final day, on the elections day, on the 10th of October, for the commission to see the massive numbers of Liberians who turned out to exercise the franchise that Liberians turn out in very high numbers. So we are pleased about that. Challenge, you know, we've had uh, challenges with misinformation, disinformation, you know, people threatening the commission on social media, uh, not even understanding how the process works. People think that we uh, uh, are cheating, but every time we are telling them that we're doing our best, we have integrity of the process, and where there are challenges, they can become complaints over to the Elections Commission. And then, of course, if uh, the party concern is not pleased, those uh, cases can be appealed to the hearing office or appealed to the Board of Commissioners and again to the Supreme Court of Liberia. So we think we're good. We think we've conducted a very good process of integrity. We have credibility of all of this, including ourselves. And we expect that Liberians will accept that the process is void of any ideas that uh, some persons may have that we are doing something other than what uh, Liberians have voted for. And we say no to that. Madam Chair, thank you so much again for the pleasure to speak with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. Good day. Divisa Brown Lansana is the chair of the National Elections Commission of Liberia. She was speaking with me from the capital, Monrovia. Kenya's President William Ruto sought $1 billion more in loans from China on Monday, despite rising public debt that has now reached $70 billion in the eastern African country, according to the Associated Press. President Ruto was one of several global leaders in Beijing to attend the 10th anniversary meeting of China's Belt and Road Initiative, the ambitious plan that aims to connect Africa, Asia, and Europe through massive infrastructure and energy projects. To find out how important China's Belt and Road Initiative is to Africa, viewers Douglas Umpuga reached political analyst David Monda. I think it very much has in two ways, in terms of economic diplomacy, because we've seen a major improvement of uh, African road infrastructure. We've seen an expansion of African railway and uh, port infrastructure, which for many years had been neglected through Chinese support and Chinese aid. But it has also afforded uh, a, lot of, a lot of African countries uh, an alternative source of economic support to the United States and uh, the European Union. In other words, Washington and Brussels are not the only game in town. Africa can turn to be- uh, Beijing for a lot of its uh, infrastructure and um, fiscal and monetary support. So it's, it's been successful in, in, in terms of that. However, it has raised a lot of uh, its own challenges. Number one is around uh, China's uh, debt diplomacy. A lot of the loans taken for this infrastructure 
is very unmanageable. A lot of the loans terms have been very opaque, not been transparent. And there's a lot of concern about whether China is actually replacing the old Western uh, nation imperialist model in terms of exploiting resources, just like the colonialists did, just that they're doing it in a different way through um, heavy debt and uh, these infrastructure uh, networks. Some people are worried that most of these projects, when African countries fail to prepare the debt, the Chinese government takes them over. Definitely. So there's that uh, case in uh, Sri Lanka when uh, the government there could not uh, service its debts and it had to uh, hand over its port to the Chinese. But we've also seen uh, very controversially, very more recently, not only the broader questions of debt diplomacy, but also issues of transparency and who these ports are handed to. There's a lot of concern on the continent of Africa because our port infrastructure, for instance, is a strategic asset, not only for imports and exports for the ocean-facing countries, but for the landlocked countries. But more importantly, it's a national security asset in terms of a legacy asset for the country. And there are concerns that with China investing in this infrastructure and African countries are really being marginalized to the competition of uh, major powers, in this case, the United States and China, who are really scrambling for Africa's raw materials, which also leads us to the broader question of to what extent is this infrastructure beneficial to Africans? And is it just being used by major global powers to exploit the continent without any value addition to the exports that are being taken out, without any accountability and investment in infrastructures of governance and norms of human rights, but also in terms of um, environmental concerns around these 